Welcome to the university. In this video, we will discuss the theories about the atom. Before anything else, please support our channel by liking this video, share our contents, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get updated to our upcoming videos. We are sure that it will help you in your studies. Atoms are the fundamental structure that makes up visible matter in the universe. The notion of the atom began way back the time of Democritus, 480 years before Christ was born. Democritus, the Greek philosopher, suggested that the world was made of two things, empty space and automos. Automos is a Greek word meaning cannot be cut. This imposed two main ideas. One, atoms are the smallest possible particle of matter. Two, it suggests that there are different types of atoms for each material. This idea remains untouched for nearly 2,000 years. A lot of things happened during the 15th and 16th century, but it was not until 1785 when the French physicist Charles Augustine de Coulomb published his first three reports of electricity and magnetism where he stated his law. This publication was essential to the development of the theory of electromagnetism. He used a torsion balance to study the repulsion and attraction forces of charged particles, and determined that the magnitude of the electric force between two-point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, including major advancement in the theory of electromagnetism. As of this point in time, they did not know that these charges were a part of the fundamental structure of matter. It was John Dalton in 1804 who re-proposed the concept about the atom with his modifications. This theory is now called as John Dalton's atomic theory that contains four important propositions. They are as follows. 1. All matter are made of atoms. 2. Atoms of one element are all the same. 3. Atoms cannot be broken down into smaller parts. And 4. Compounds form by combining atoms. Dalton also proposed a name for his atomic model and it is called the billiard ball model. This model was proposed dated 1803. There are experiments that needs to be explained. One of such experiments is the cathode ray tube experiment. This experiment uses an evacuated tube with less gas compared to the outside surroundings. It has two plate terminals which is connected to a voltage source. One of the plate is positively charged and the other plate is negatively charged. Since Coulomb's law is already established, we know that if there are floating charges in space, it will be attracted to the plates of the cathode ray tube. This is the hypothesis of the experiment. In the year 1897, the English physicist J.J. Thomson, who lived in the years 1856 to 1940, put a sample of gas in the tube and he observed that there is a light emanating from the negatively charged plate of the cathode ray tube set up going to the positive plate. Following Coulomb's law, these things must be negatively charged and are said to be a charge carrier. He called this particle as electrons. It is clear that another revision must be made in the current model about the atom. J.J. Thomson was the first scientist to realize that the atom is still made up of even smaller things which are nowadays called as subatomic particles. He then theorized that the electron is embedded in a sphere of positively charged matter. He called his model as the plum pudding model. The plum in the pudding represents the newly found negatively charged particle known now as the electron and the pudding represents the positively charged part of the atom. Other findings during the cathode ray tube experiments are listed as follows. 1. Thomson found that a cathode ray is deflected by electrically charged metal plates. A positively charged plate attracts the cathode ray, while a negatively charged plate repels it. 2. A cathode ray can also be deflected by a magnet. This further confirms the theory of electromagnetism. 3. Thomson also established the charge to mass ratio of the electron. In 1909, Robert A. Millikan and Harvey Fletcher performed the famous oil drop experiment where they found out the value of the charge of the electron to be in integral multiples of 1.602176634 times 10 raised to negative 19 c. 
Still, this theory has flaws because positive and negatively charged particles cannot touch each other because they will cancel out. Hence we must know what is inside the pudding. A scientist suggests that if we want to know what is inside the pudding, we must poke it. The one who proposed this idea is none other than Ernest Rutherford. Rutherford lived from 1871 to 1937 is one of the students of J.J. Thomson. He is born in New Zealand, awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1908 and his portrait is seen in the New Zealand Hundred Dollar Bill. In 1911, Rutherford and his co-workers wanted to test the existing plum pudding model of atomic structure. They devised the gold foil experiment. Their test used alpha particles, which are helium atoms that have lost their two electrons and have a double positive charge because of the two remaining protons. In the experiment, a narrow beam of alpha particles was directed at a very thin sheet of gold. According to the prevailing theory, the alpha particles should have passed easily through the gold, with only a slight deflection due to the positive charge thought to be spread out in the gold atoms. Rutherford's results were that most alpha particles went straight through, or were slightly deflected. What was surprising is that a small fraction of the alpha particles bounced off the gold foil at very large angles. Some even, bounced straight back towards the source. From these observations, Rutherford realized that 1. The atom is mostly empty space. 2. There is a small, dense center with a positive charge. 3. Rutherford discovered the nucleus in atoms. Based on these experimental results Rutherford suggested a new theory about the atom. He also suggested a new model for the atom called as the nuclear atom model where the electrons revolves around the massive center called as the nucleus. Rutherford concluded that all the positive charge and almost all of the mass are concentrated in a small region that has enough positive charge to account for the great deflection of some of the alpha particles. His nuclear atom model, the protons and neutrons are located in the positively charged nucleus. The electrons are distributed around the nucleus and occupy almost all the volume of the atom. According to this model, the nucleus is tiny and densely packed compared with the atom as a whole. If an atom were the size of a football stadium, the nucleus would be about the size of a marble. Rutherford estimated the diameter of the nucleus to be about 10,000 times smaller than the diameter of the atom. This means that an atom has an even larger fraction of empty space than the solar system. Rutherford's model is still incomplete as it is not able to explain why the electron is not crushing to the nucleus despite the attractive force that exists between charges and also can't explain the fact that an accelerating charge must have been losing energy. This model is also not able to explain different chemical properties of atoms. Another flaw has to do with the radiation emitted by the orbiting electron. The frequency of the radiation should be the same as the frequency of the orbit. If electrons spiraled inward, the frequency would increase continuously, and the light emitted by the atom would span a continuous range of frequencies. This prediction does not agree with experiments, which show that atoms emit only certain discrete frequencies of light. During the 1900s, there is a device known as a gas discharge tube. It is used to study the light given off by atoms. When a high voltage is applied to the ends of the glass discharge tube, which contains a gas at low pressure, the atoms in the gas become excited and emit electromagnetic radiation. Passing the radiation through a diffraction grating separates it into its various wavelengths, the result is a series of brightly colored lines. This type of spectrum emitted by atoms, with bright lines at specific frequencies colors, is referred to as a line spectrum. In contrast, blackbody radiation is given off over a continuous range